the mortgage interest, in which case you're buying a home and the home is typically personal, but possibly deductible, possibly because in part, you've got big lobbyists in the, in the home building and selling and real estate area that want to subsidize the market, I would think it might be one reason uh, it's there. But anyway, that's somewhat skeptical of a, or investment activities. Now investments kind of in the middle, because if you think about investment activities, you, you're basically thinking of a situation where you might take out a loan in order to buy, say, stocks and bonds because you think the stocks and bonds are going to go up in value, for example. So if you think like Apple stock is going to go up in value, I need to buy Apple stock because it's going to double in value tomorrow, but I don't have any money. Well, what I can do is leverage it, right? I could take out a loan and then purchase the stocks and then we'll see what happens, right? If it goes up in value, I still have to pay off the loan payments, but as long as the increase in value is greater than the amount of the interest uh, that I have to pay, then I'm a winner in that game. And that works great as long as you're winning. <laughs> but, but if the stock goes down in value, you can also get in the hole real quickly. So there, there's a, a real question in terms of just should we have it deductible or not in terms of basically investment and, and like speculative purposes? Because the question there is, do we want to be incentivizing people to taking on risks that seem more closer akin to like gambling rather than legitimate long term business uh, risk, which would be more like the situation where you buy equipment and you're planning on building a business, which is a long term thing rather than a short-term investment gain that you might be trying to take out a loan because you heard some you know it's got some inside news on a stock trade or something like that